Okay, I am recording this. Happy Thanksgiving 2023. I am recording this for family and uh, those who would like to know how Papa Perry is making chicken and noodles from scratch. So you can put whatever in that you want. I'm not giving no cups or anything like that. I put a healthy amount of flour in here. About a little over a, about a quarter bowl. And this bowl is probably about a 10 inch diameter bowl. So we're just adding eggs. And what we're doing here is going to get these eggs mixed up with this flour. I've salt and peppered it and so I am the messiest egg flour maker there is so if you uh, become really messy at this and you're following the Papa Perry tradition so what I'm doing is just getting I think we've done what one two three four maybe five eggs and you can make these in different different uh, quantities. So you can do one, mix it up, and then do the other. So I think I've got enough eggs in here now to get my hands dirty, if you know what I mean. All right, so what I'm doing right now is we're just rolling this to start a dough. And you're just going to have to mix it and push it together and combine those things. Okay. So get you some good old Christian music going on. You want to just start bringing all this together to make you a good dough. Now on this one here, I am, since it's only us today, I'm not going to be making like two and three different ones. So you want to basically make sure you have a, a bowl of flour ready to uh, mix and blend. Just added some more dry flour here to start rolling this because it's a little wet. You just want to get that even roll here. And once you get this thing starting to come together, and you start being able to literally knead this. Okay. It'll start coming together and you'll see now I'm getting a clump that's coming together. And again, you're just going to want to roll it and push this in. Okay. And at this point, I'm about ready to bring it to the counter, take it out of the bowl, and you can see now. And you can still see the wet parts and we're just gonna start kneading this together okay so pull and we're gonna want to make sure you keep your counter Pushing it in, You're just combining that dry flour. And you'll dry them up. And this is what we're going to use. Now, what I would suggest if you are making a larger 
for lots of people, you're going to use one to two whole chickens. And you're going to boil those. And Nicole has boiled our chicken. And what she does is she'll pull the chicken off. She'll spread it. And we have this. So once you boil that chicken, then you can get your chicken shredded. And this is going to go in with cooking the noodles. And the other key is for the Perry recipe is cream of chicken. Don't get the off brands, just get the Campbell's. Make everything consistent and you'll have a consistent taste. I cannot stress that enough. So what we've done was we've poured about four, five cups of flour in a bowl. We put about five, six eggs in there and we've added flour as needed to get this dough the way it is right now. So again, having too much flour is not going to be a problem once you get this thing because you just want to keep it from sticking to your surface. So. I'm going to call that good. We ended up using, I think, uh, about a half dozen eggs to about five cups of uh, flour. So this is what we ended up with. And again, dry off your hands. And then we are going to be rolling this thing up. So there you go set that aside and uh, we'll be right back okay we are back uh, we have a rolling pin again we've talked about making sure your surface has plenty of flour so we're gonna start the process of rolling and what I like to do is I'm going to get our dough almost in pizza size so I'm gonna set that aside so I'm just gonna take this piece set it aside and we're gonna work with a smaller piece here and we're just gonna basically get this thing rolled out So as we're going on here, just to give a little bit of a historical type lesson is in the Old Testament, you have what we have today is the Judeo-Christian values and traditions, I will say. Um, normally Jesus didn't like traditions, but it was the traditions of the Pharisees. Um, because they were hypocrites they were the religion of the day and they didn't do what they said for others to do um, so anyhow if it's not causing someone to sin it's not sinning and a tradition for your family is not a bad thing When you're talking about religion and truth in Jesus, traditions of the Pharisees was bad because they were straight up hypocrites. They would require you to do it, but they wouldn't do it themselves. And they did not do anything with love. They did it with benefit to themselves. And that's why... It was such a problem with Jesus, aside from them not giving truth of what the Bible or the old scripture was meant to be. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to, our noodles in length are going to be about an inch and a half. 
to two inches and that's what we're looking at here so that's what I'm going to be making these so if you cut these things straight across and I'm just rocking this so that it doesn't slice my uh, countertop up and what I'm going to do is I'm just layering these on top of each other okay. and these things are, are fairly thin these things are going to expand and I'll tell you thin fairly thin I would say thin just a little bit thicker than maybe a bank or credit card okay again you like longer noodles then you may want to make these thicker but it's always been a good inch and a half to two inches max This one here is a five pound, so you're going to use about maybe up to two pounds of uh, flour to prepare these noodles. So, and when I can, I like to get a fresh bag, not the one that's been sitting in the pantry for a month and a half. stick together so back to the tradition thing our government in the United States is very big <coughs> biblically traditional and you read any of the Old Testament you see that Abraham the father of all nations God blessed him and you see that bloodlines and family meant a lot according to the scripture in the Bible because if you look at the bloodline of Jesus it needed to come through David from from Adam it would have been Seth and Cain and Abel Cain decided Abel needed to go took his life and Seth came back to restore the good bloodline and when we talk about the good bloodline we're talking about yeah. Good seed. As good as it could get, basically. Without the hands of murder. And we also find that when David wanted to build a temple unto the Lord, that God told him that he had blood on his hands and that Solomon would have to build the temple. So David spent his life preparing the materials to get that done all right so at this point we're going to just start cutting some noodles i'm going to get another pan i know i had another pan so i'll use this one to throw the cut noodles in Again, here you find you're going to separate these noodles 
and the more flour that you have in between the the noodle layers the easier it's going to be to separate these noodles so you're going to want to put them in another dish pan pot whatever and i am about a quarter a quarter of an inch you see that to my finger a quarter of an inch is what I'm cutting these and again having enough flour is going to help when you compress these noodles and cut them they're going to come apart better if you have lots of flour in it and they're not it's not sticky dough so make sure you do that or you're just going to cause yourself a lot of problems when you go to separate these noodles before you drop them in the pan. So make sure you do that. nobody deserves blind respect but Jesus Christ and that he came and he proved himself he said believe me if you don't believe me believe me for the very work's sake so even Jesus said listen I'll give you a reason to believe me and he did and he was God so when you look at that kind of thing Okay, so I don't know how long that's been off, but let me reiterate the, the important point is that if your children, if you don't teach your children to respect their grandparents and respect you, no matter what you do or the decisions that you or they made, you're going to end up when they don't agree with you as their parent. What you're teaching them is that just because they don't agree with you, they do not have to respect you. And you're going to pay the dividends for that because just an example did or why they did it to respect them you just need to trust them if you can't trust your parents and grandparents for your own good then there's a deeper issue and maybe you maybe this conversation doesn't apply to you but the point is you have to develop that in your children and they're going to see how you treat your parents their grandparents and others around you and there is a hierarchy in the family there is a governmental faction in the family i don't agree that there's a governmental faction in the church outside of jesus christ himself being the one that we all go to. There is no other man or position that we have to be, be held, holding to in the church. Jesus came and changed all that. That was the point of him coming to do all that, to bring us back to God himself without man being an intermediary. There was one man, the Bible says, and that's Jesus Christ, the man who was crucified for our sins to bring us back to God. There was no other man, be it Peter, Paul, anyone else that is in the Bible. So there was none other that is able to be a propitiation, a sacrifice for your sins outside of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if anyone is teaching, telling you that, they are wrong and they are antichrist.
What do I mean by antichrist? Because they're not leading you to Christ. They're leading you to man and an intermediary who was never worthy, never could. If the old law would have been good enough, we wouldn't have had to have the new law. And I mean law, I mean covenant. Covenant with Jesus. And that's a blood covenant with Jesus that has taken away your sins. He died for your sins. So, if anyone tells you that you must be subjected unto any man or office or authority, they are lying to you. They have their own benefit at heart, no matter what you see or what they do or say. It is not God's intent. So, anyhow, I'm just cleaning this out. I'm use this for the noodles. back in here and what I'm gonna do you see some of these are sticky still so to keep that from sticking I'm gonna throw some more flour in here and you want these things this flour in here to and you want to just take your noodles and again if you put enough flour as you're cutting these in between the layers and you're not gonna have a lot of problems of sticking so this here, um, you can if if you don't think this is enough noodles, and, and you'll have to cook some, and you'll you'll eventually see that uh, these things swell up and they make a lot. So, but if you have a large crowd, you may want to repeat this process again, make another batch. Um, you're best at making batches, then you know what you end up with in your bowl. So, all right, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. And the uh, instruction on how to make these noodles. We will be boiling the broth, the chicken. We will be putting the cream of chicken in there, broth. And then we will be putting the chicken in there. And then we will, once that gets boiling, we'll be dropping these noodles. And then we'll come back and do that when we are ready to do that. Um, you can make these the night before. You can lay them out on the table. Um, do they get better? I think they do. Uh, you can just put some newspaper out or put some um, just freezer paper or whatever across your table. Lay these out, separate them, and it'll be delicious to drop in. So, all right, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in a bit.